Go. All right, so I just had a quick chat with Brandon, and we're talking about the money end of things now. Um, and so I'm going to let Brandon tell you a little bit about how this all came to be. Um, I know it's pretty much all donation-based, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and Brandon, tell everybody um, what your, your budget looks like, what your needs are, if you guys are even making a profit yet. And I know you've made a heck of a lot of personal sacrifice. <laughs> don't, don't be shy. Don't be afraid to talk about that either. So. All right. Well, uh, as we talked about earlier, this is kind of a partnership between two nonprofits. Uh, one of them builds these systems around the world to feed people. The other one's here locally to get yeah. getting some. Uh, but neither one of them has money to pour into this. So right. we have been fortunate that the local tribe has donated some just to get the structure up and get us moving. Yeah. Um, but at this point, uh, some of the money that we do have is earmarked for other projects. And we do have some issues like we're going to talk about where uh, we could use additional funds to make sure the system's working properly. Um, everything so far has really been donated labor, um, including myself. Um, I get kind of a portion of the sales, but we haven't sold much of anything since last September. Yeah. So, um, so we're talking <laughs> seven months with really no sales. Yep. Um, and we'll, we'll talk in a, in a minute about what's causing the lack of product to sell yeah. um, and how we aim to fix it with this Kickstarter campaign. But for right now, um, where's where's this place sitting financially? I mean, you're obviously having profit. Um, yeah. How, how's it looking? You know, do donations only go so far. Um, you guys really want to be self-sustaining, and uh, how are you going to get there? Um, do you think it can get there? Um, and what do you see as being the, the best way to get there? Yeah. Well, we definitely have the capacity here to be profitable. Uh, up till now, we're just hoping that we can get to the point where we're covering our costs. Um, so far, we've had to kind of use donation money and things like that just to limp along and keep going until we can get to a point where we're producing enough and kind of have the market to pay our bills first and then hopefully be profitable and really help support some of these things that we want to do, like the New Beginnings Home and help build these systems to feed people. Okay. So, New Beginnings is relying on you and this place to help fund what they're doing for young pregnant women. Uh, what, so you've, you've got a huge driving force behind you, I know that. I know your passion for what's going on up there and how much you want this place to succeed. Um, we look back and we see a lot of empty trays, some of it's just been planted. Um, what kind of turnaround time are you getting? Like, let's say on the lettuce, what's your turnaround time from seed to harvest? Uh, well, it has depended a little bit on the sunlight. Right. Uh, we'll figure that out. Uh, I would say that right now we're probably at a turnaround time of well, like eight weeks or something. Right. Uh, if we would like to be like six weeks. Would be yeah, like much and, better. <laughs> and this this system, when it's running properly, is capable of four or even five weeks. Um, four is kind of pushing it, but if everything's clicking right, you could be at four weeks on your lettuce. More like five. And if you saw the size of the heads of lettuce, they should be at least 50% larger that, than that in the time of just five weeks. Um, and so that is really all attributable to the need that they have for filters, which is what we're talking about today and what we want to solve. So if we take a look over here, um, we pull this raft up. And if you come look, Everything that the fish put into the water stays in the water without proper proper filtration. And these guys did a great system of building a huge or a great job of building a huge system here. Um, but they didn't account, and it's just because it's a lot of guys that aren't experts in this. They got together um, and they tried to build something. And along the way, it's a learning process. And you know, mistakes are made, things are, are overlooked. Um, and again, everything was donation based, so they only had so much to work with to begin with. Um, and personally, I think it's really, really sad to see these guys putting so much effort into it. And you look at the bottom of their ponds here, this should be crystal clear. There should be nothing in here but water um, and good nutrients that are dissolved and have already gone through a biological process and broke down into the nitrates that the plants need. Um, plants in an aquaponic system don't actually eat fish poop. What happens is the fish poop 
gets taken out of the system as quickly as possible with good filtration, which we want to build that way. Um, and the ammonia that is left behind in the water gets eaten by nitrobacter, um, as well as some other good beneficial bacteria, and it turns it into nitrate, and then that gets turned into, or excuse me, gets turned into nitrate, nitrite, which then gets turned into nitrates, um, which the plants eat. And so plants don't eat poop. The bacteria eat the poop, and they poop out the stuff that the plants eat, if that makes sense. So all this stuff in here, when you leave all the actual fish poop in the water, and it winds up reaching your grow beds, it sits in here and it rots. And as it rots, it eats all the oxygen in the system that the plants need. Um, also, those good beneficial bacteria need oxygen in order to do their job and give the plants nutrients. So, leaving it in here and not having proper filtration is hurting them in about four different ways. And it's cutting their money um, down to about 20% of what it should be. Um, and with a real simple fix, you know, about $3,500 is what we're trying to raise. And I'll eat whatever you don't raise. They're gonna get their filtration system. They got my promise on that. Um, but my pockets aren't deep. And uh, so I'm really reaching out to you guys to kind of help make up the difference. Um, but we're gonna get them the filtration system in here. It's gonna take all that out. And when I'm done here, you're gonna go from seeing this kind of nastiness in the bottom of the pond out here to after I got my filtration system in here and it's run for a while and the system is balanced back out the way it's supposed to be, this water should taste as clear and crisp as coming straight out of a, a good healthy mountain stream. Um, and I'll show you that. I'll actually grab a glass of water and I'll drink it and that'll be your little thank you because you're going to see me walk or see me drink water that you know fish were in a couple hours ago. And uh, anyway, I, I'm just really excited and really hopeful that you guys will get behind this program. Um, and I'll get into the geeky details of exactly what system I'm building and stuff like that in a video I do later from home. Um, I'll show you some drawings and some actual plans because I know some of you guys out there uh, want to see that. So I guess for now, uh, I think Brandon and I would just say, please support us. Um, you got any other words you want to share? Yeah, I uh, just wanted to say that we are excited to kind of partner with Dan and uh, the stuff that he's going to be doing with his operation up in Everett and uh, just really appreciate his kind of expertise and knowledge that he brings and helping us get the system running properly and really appreciate you guys helping us make this happen and try to bring some good healthy local product to the area. Right, so Click the button, donate, feel good about it. Stop by here, Brandon will owe you a hug. Perfect. Hey, perfect. I was worried what he'd say. I didn't tell him I was going to say I'm a hugger. Yeah, here we go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's how we do it here. Thanks, guys. <laughs>